the channel is so close to 50,000 subscribers. If you would hit that button, it would really mean a lot. If there's one manufacturer that is under the pump more than ever, it's Boeing. At the same time, this feels like a reoccurring theme when analyzing the manufacturer's performance across the last decade. With each occasion, the focus does indeed shift, and there are so many reasons why Boeing finds itself in the position it is in. Arguably, some don't even have an isolated reason yet, but there are certainly trends that are present as to why all of this has happened. And while I put a lot of the focus on the state of the company internally, we have reached a point in time where there is either, say, turbulence on an aircraft or something completely unrelated to the fact that Boeing produced the aircraft involved in a non-critical incident that simply finds its way back to the plane maker and not in a good way. They are basically guilty by association, even if in these cases they haven't done anything wrong. It's been a period where everything has also been blown out of proportion. But equally, I have to be careful with what I say, because some things are not blown out of proportion, but others absolutely yes. Let's take a look at profit over safety. Long has there been talk over profit over safety, whether it was the Netflix documentary Downfall or another analytical piece on Boeing here on the channel. Many argue that Boeing's merger with McDonnell Douglas in 1997 represented a pivotal moment in our industry. Those same people believe it also represented a shift in how Boeing looked at building aircraft. The company's newfound emphasis on profits and stock performance deviated really from its traditional focus that had seen it lead the way in terms of innovation and the quality of product that was being put out. These latter qualities helped propel it through the jet age where we saw the manufacturer develop cutting edge aircraft that to this day helped redefine how we travel. In a pursuit for shareholder value, Boeing really increased prioritizing cost cutting measures for short term financial gains over say long term investments in research and development. At the time, while there was pushback from some, only really a few publicly came out and discussed the potential negative ramifications of this major focus shift. Boeing, however, stuck to this newfound success, not seeing anything wrong with it. The Boeing 737 MAX crisis of the late 2010s that was really attributed thanks to the rushed development and regulatory oversights did epitomize the issue that stemmed from the end of the 1990s. The company's relentless drive for profits undermined its commitment to safety and some would also say innovation. I touched on the MAX saga briefly but there's more to it than just a couple of sentences. There are many problems with this aircraft that have led Boeing to where they are today. Let's take a look at Airbus's release of the A320neo, which I've covered here on the channel, and I identified that it marked a pretty significant new era for not just the European plane maker, but for Boeing in the single aisle aircraft market, as they faced a new challenge. The A320neo's improved fuel efficiency and advanced technology put immense pressure on Boeing to respond in a competitive manner. After all, it couldn't afford to lose all its market share in such an important sector. However, Boeing's response was hampered by delays and the need to enhance their 737NG model rather than develop a clean sheet design. Basically, there was not enough time to build this clean sheet. Time being of the essence, Boeing needed to find a solution fast. With the understanding that it was important to counter Airbus's dominance, the decision to enhance the 737NG formally came. This choice made a lot of sense. If Boeing believed that they could exhaust further life out of the 737 fuselage with enhancements that weren't, say, too drastic, but would allow them to keep the costs low, meaning production would not only be able to be increased quickly, but certification too, then it was nothing short of a win-win-win, and that's how many people perceived it. It would become apparent, though, that Boeing was constrained by the limitations of the 737's original design with this MAX iteration, particularly when taking a look at the fuselage. Moreover, in a rush to the market, Boeing knew deep down that they would need more time to get this approval 
for the aircraft. Reports backed by firm evidence and unfortunate incidents suggest that shortcuts were taken in the certification process to expedite approval and limit Airbus's time to dominate the market unopposed. This included downplaying the significant changes to the flight control system. We know that later emerged as a primary factor that led to the tragic accidents in 2018 and 2019. Problems on the floor are another area and they still shine through today as some of the leading reasons why Boeing continues to struggle as a manufacturer. However, if you ask those on the floor why all of this is happening, they'll often point the fingers at management. That puts them in a position that they wouldn't ideally be comfortable in. Boeing has faced repeated criticisms for its treatment of workers in its production plants. Numerous reporting highlight improper handling and unrealistic targets set out by upper management. Whistleblowers and former employees have come forward, shedding light on the challenges faced. Many have recounted being pressured to meet production quotas that could not have been further from achievable, given the complexities involved in building aircraft. I'll personally never forget my discussions with a now-retired engineer at Boeing, who said that he felt upper management didn't actually know how to build planes. As a collective at Boeing, their way to resolve this was with the firm belief that those in the higher up roles managing those on the floor needed to be people that built planes. What does this mean? It means that those in upper management needed to just understand what it meant to be on the ground and not behind an office door, as these differences had negative implication to those working on the aircraft. Allegations of intimidation and retaliation against whistleblowers have further tarnished Boeing's image. On many occasions, these employees have said they were too afraid to speak up over quality concerns because of the potential ramifications they would face. At worst, this could be the loss of a job, which can destroy not only just a person's life, but their entire family. The risk, therefore, is deemed too great to speak up, but it sets an impossible working environment with very few positives that are present. Reoccurring themes continue to pop up when examining what has gone wrong at Boeing and why they find themselves in such a position that they do today. The situation is unfortunate on almost every single count. This is once a company that epitomized America, the American dream, one where if you wore that Boeing uniform, people smiled at you in the street and knew that you were doing something fantastic. And that might sound cliche all you want, especially in today's society, but it is true. This is a company that pushed forward with innovation, but it is now a shadow of its former self. Those on the floor want a change. Aviation enthusiasts and the broader industry do too. How Boeing actually moves ahead and achieves this remains to be seen, but stringing together several months of solid progress is no doubt going to be the first step in a multi-year recovery. You can let me know your thoughts on Boeing down below in the comments, and I'd love to hear, really, why do you believe Boeing is struggling so much? Are there any other potential reasons you'd like me to explore, or do you have thoughts on the ones that I have brought up? Let me know. Thanks a lot for watching, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest aviation analysis. And flight, and we'll fly.